Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Directions Mag Geospatial webinar. Today, sponsored by our friends at Esri. I'm Barbara Duke, managing editor here at Directions Magazine, joined by our webinar producer, Lynette Qualia. If you have any questions about your connection, just drop us a note in the chat. We'll do our best to help you. We encourage you to read the latest news articles, listen to our podcasts, or watch more webinars at directionsmag.com. We are excited to have Anthony, John, Jeff, and Andy with us today to talk about how we can be most effective with your GeoBIM projects. We're glad to have you with us today and excited to learn something new about how we can connect future integrations between Esri and Autodesk. Welcome, gentlemen. Very excited to learn more today. Thanks so much, Barbary. It's great to be here. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for joining Anthony, John, Andy, and myself for today's webinar, Bridging GIS and BIM to Design, Build, and Maintain Resilient Infrastructure. So on today's agenda, we'll be starting things off with a quick poll question. A few words about building with resiliency and how connecting GIS and BIM can help bridge the gap. Anthony will then talk about some of the great work that Esri and Autodesk have been doing over the past few years, followed by a demo by John and Andy, and we'll cap things off with Q&A to answer all your questions at the end. Please note that today's webinar includes forward-looking roadmap and schedule information that may include dates, release numbers, or scope that could change without notice. Customers and partners are advised not to make business or purchasing decisions based on such forwarding forward-looking statements. So let's begin with a few words around resiliency. So across the globe, we're experiencing an increasing trend of acute and chronic stresses in our infrastructure and communities, from forest fires to more frequent 100-year storms. This is sparking the need to better plan, design, build, and operate these critical assets within context of the natural and built environment so that they can absorb future risks and pressures over their service life. According to a 2021 report by First Street Foundation, a quarter of America's critical infrastructure is at risk of inoperability due to flooding. And 23% 20, of all roads are at risk of becoming impassable. Over the next 30 years, thousands of critical and social infrastructure assets are projected to become at risk. By bridging the geographic approach and GIS to how we model built assets or the practice of them, we can not only better connect infrastructure projects in context, but also realize greater project outcomes by reducing uh, the amount of time and costs wasted. A recently released report by Geospatial World on GIS and BIM integration found that large projects saved on average over 28% in design time, 90 days in construction time, and 13% in overall project costs. Connecting GIS and BIM also enables team to, teams to better assess complexities and uncertainties through the project delivery phase, while providing greater accuracy in cost estimation during the pre-build stage. So with that, I'll now pass it over to Anthony to talk about integrating the two workflows. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Renteria, and I'm the product manager for ArcGIS GeoBIM. Before we head into the integration patterns that have been developed, I want to first reiterate these descriptions for BIM and GIS. You know, BIM, or the Building Information Modeling Process, captures and supplies highly detailed information about assets that might have been created during project delivery, while GIS, or the Geographic Information System, provides data and analysis about how these same assets operate and are used in a spatial context that integrates various information, describing the conditions, landscapes, networks, and entire cities. So we can see how BIM and GIS provide specific kinds of information that are important in different but complementary ways. And so if we see this bringing together, if you move on to the next slide, Together, BIM and GIS provide information that encompasses the entire life cycle of a project or asset. And that life cycle of data spans multiple phases or workflows and needs depending on a specific user or goal. And while this connection or flow of information may appear direct from one step to the next, we completely recognize that this need for cross collaborative data happens all throughout these processes. Since each helps inform the other by adding richer context that completes holistic views of our world. 
And so together, GIS with BIM provides context at multiple scales, offering views into the natural environment like vegetation coverage, waterways, and environmental impacts, while also viewing the built environment, including roads, highways, and power lines, including sewer drainage pipes, and throughout neighborhoods and cities. And at BIM, with GIS, supplements detailed design and construction practices, such as facility planning or bridge engineering, while accounting for the surrounding environment and constraints that can cause risks later in the process if not caught earlier. So what are some of the examples we often hear from our users on these workflows? So our customers who are designing, building, and managing infrastructure know that this added context helps them be more effective by making informed decisions. So they want to plan facilities and bridges within context while assessing traffic impact or collaborate with service providers on complex assets within their portfolio or citywide lens. Or simply share progress views of projects and these assets that provide multiple systems data to their stakeholders. So they're all looking for ways to access information about these assets and those environments to improve this visualization, this broader analysis, planning, and greater understanding. So all of these require this intersection of BIM and GIS. So if this seems like a clear need and a win, what's the challenge? Unfortunately, bringing BIM and GIS together wasn't always easy, to be honest. <laughs> and the result is data and information loss happens throughout the, an asset's life cycle. So in many organizations, different types of data are siloed in disconnected systems. And as projects move through each phase, data may be created, stored in a particular system, but that data isn't readily available or accessible in the next phase. So this results in inefficiencies, including data duplication, rework, and higher costs throughout the asset lifecycle. But by directly integrating GIS and BIM workflows more seamlessly, we can minimize the inefficiencies and that loss, smoothing out that curve of handover of data. With proper integrations, each project phase can leverage and build on each earlier data, which creates a clearer and more complete picture of facilities and assets as they progress through the cycle. And that's why we partnered with Autodesk to streamline these complicated combinations of GIS and BIM processes and data sources. Esri and Autodesk share a goal to bring these complementary practices together so everyone that designs, builds, or operates assets can work smarter, more efficiently, and improve communication that provides transparency into this complex world. And so over the past years, integrations between Autodesk and ArcGIS have primarily focused on connecting cloud data with applications used by specific users such as engineers, designers, construction, and GIS professionals. And this was great for skilled staff that needed to have their data alongside their tool sets they use to create and manage this project or asset information with GIS content. And then, if, for example, users within Autodesk InfraWorks and Civil 3D can connect to ArcGIS and bring GIS into their design workflows. So they're not having to figure out ways to bring information that was a little bit more difficult to bring in previously. And at the same time, GIS professionals within ArcGIS Pro can bring BIM content directly into their GIS workflows. And drone reality capture managers can connect to Autodesk and share their useful data sets for site context and analysis through SiteScan for ArcGIS. But that's, not, that's only part of this integration story. Organizations, also need to unlock the value of BIM and GIS content by making it easy for the non-technical users to access this in a focused, easy to use web application. And these users don't need the tool sets of design applications or GIS software. They just need to see this information together within a map and in a web browser. And so this is where ArcGIS GeoBIM comes in. ArcGIS GeoBIM brings content together from both ArcGIS and the Autodesk Construction Cloud or BIM 360, and then places your asset or project information on a map in a seamless web-based experience. So this transforms projects and assets with geospatial context, 
allowing you to connect the BIM processes with real world location throughout the asset life cycle to better manage your risks, costs, and timelines. So you can create GeoBIM projects with multiple GeoBIM apps to provide critical insights per audience to improve understanding and make coordinated decisions with stakeholders. ArcGIS GeoBIM supports workflows from design and construction into operations handover, informing users on project updates, site evaluations, documentation reviews, and more. Yeah. What I would like to do next is pass this over to John Sayer and Andrew Creek that will provide a demo of some of these integrations that I've discussed leading up to this part. And look forward to hearing more questions from you all. My name is John Sayer. I, I am a technical marketing manager here at Autodesk. And I kind of work hand in hand with the technical folks at, uh, at Esri. And um, uh, we, we've done a lot of these webinars together. And, and um, I just feel blessed to be able to do so. What I want to do is, is talk to you today just a little bit about maybe looking through the lens of the civil engineer. Um, the civil engineer is very, very dependent on what we like to call existing conditions data. All right, what you see here on the screen is you see a project that has a couple of building pads, maybe a little park area, a detention pond, some grading, um, a roadway. Uh, but, but what we're lacking right now uh, that we can definitely pull from good, rich GIS information is existing conditions data for utilities. So today what we're going to focus on is a sewer line and maybe a sewer connection for this building. Okay, we'll keep it pretty simple. What I want you to remember, though, is that it doesn't just have to be one piece of data that we're focusing on. Because our friends, on the, uh, the civil engineers friends on the GIS side can create a web map that contains all of the existing conditions data for this entire area, meaning floodplain information, uh, building outlines that are existing, uh, existing roadway center lines, existing stormwater lines, things of that nature that are gonna help us make good design decisions right out of the gate. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have good, accurate GIS information. And of course, being able to access that information very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what we call the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS. The Autodesk connector for ArcGIS is inside of our civil 3D package, which would be for design that the civil engineers would use for design. Um, it's also in InfraWorks. InfraWorks is a product that we have that is great for visualization, but you can also do preliminary design uh, when you, when by creating a very rich, uh, obviously when I say rich, I mean with GIS, but a contextual model of the entire site that's 3D that it just makes more sense to see it that way sometimes. So we'll be working inside of Civil 3D and and take a look at how the connector works. All right, so my friend Andy, uh, who you'll be hearing from here in a minute, has created, uh, I've, I've asked him to create me a, a web map with some existing GIS information for this area. And the sewer is what we're going to focus on. So he's got that created and I can, I can show you out here what that looks like. This is inside of ArcGIS Online. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with this. So you can see that this GIS data has a lot of great information, okay? Number one, size of pipe. That's definitely something the civil needs to look at for flows. Um, it's also got some custom information on it that they put on telling you where the, the, the actual sewage goes. It goes to the downtown plant, when it was installed, when it was inspected, um, if it's in good condition, what uh, type of material. Um, sometimes, uh, we, we don't know what type of material it is, and that, and that does make a difference, okay, because uh, of how we tie into an existing uh, maybe transmission line. In this particular case, it's 18 inches. That's a pretty big sewer pipe. All right, so all of that data is here inside of this web map. Now we need to see it in our civil model. So we're going to use the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS to make that happen. I'll just go ahead and select that, and we're able to zoom to wherever we want. We can put in a search location. All right, it's already zoomed to where I want to be, but I would just, I could say, here, I'll just show you all where I live, Springfield, Missouri, and it would pop us out to Springfield, Missouri. That project that we're looking at right now is in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. So we'll go back to it. 
and you can see it's still selected there. So this area right here is where my project is. So I need everything that's there that I have curated for me. So Andy has built a group for me specifically for Highlands Ranch and all of this information is, is uh, in and around my project area and at my fingertips. So now I can just select the existing sanitary sewer there's a couple different ways we can look at this. We can just bring this information in as COGO points. So just points for the structures. And for the pipe, we could just use what's called feature lines inside of Civil 3D. But I wanna take it a step further because I kinda of like to model in and build a profile, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, of the existing sanitary sewer because visually it's gonna tell me more about what I'm tying to. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it, I wanna make the structures, actual structures in Civil 3D and I want to make the gravity pipes, gravity pipes. I hit add to my project. And I have a schema mapping page that comes up or panel that comes up that I can start to match GIS information that I'm pulling in to my civil structure properties. All right, so we'll start off with the structures. I'm just going to map one of these. All right, so under source property uh, name, I can just go down and this gives me a list of all of the different attributes that are on the GIS structures I'm bringing in, all right? So I, I need the diameter, so I'm gonna give it, tell it to read the inside diameter here. I'm also going to, in the pipes portion of this, I'm going to map to one of the custom attributes that was put in right here uh, and call it pipe size, right? For the inside pipe diameter. And it's gonna pull that information in when it generates this and make things the right size. I'll hit apply and OK, and in comes my GIS data, all right? Now, it has built me, if you're familiar with, with uh, Civil 3D at all, it has generated a pipe network for me, all right? So these are dynamic structures. They also have all of that rich G GIS information on them that I can instantly query, all right? Just by selecting this structure and then going to the properties of it, I can see all of that data. All right, just as I see it in ArcGIS Online. All right, not only for the structures, but for also, also for the pipes, all right? All of this information is there. So I can look at it, see, you know, it tells me everything about this pipe. That's why I said in the beginning, it's great to have rich GIS data and accurate GIS data because I think the accuracy sometimes of GIS data, it evolves over time because things get put in um, in an early stage and then you keep adding to that data because you find out more things about this infrastructure being underground and having it inspected and things of that nature. You're going to need and add more great information to that GIS information that's going to help more than just us today. It's going to help engineers that attach to this later on. All right. Now, we've got that information in. There's a couple things that we can do here. If we were to go out and inspect this and pull this manhole lid and see here in our properties, uh, when, before we leave the office to inspect, we see here that this is this structure is in good condition. We go out and pull the lid and we see a problem with it, all right? Inside of Civil 3D with the correct, uh, with the correct permissions from ArcGIS Online, you can save back information that you put in here. So I can modify this from good to bad, okay? I hit enter, I change that to bad. Now in order to get that to repopulate in ArcGIS Online, I simply go back to my data source manager and that was a structure, so I don't have to worry about the structures. I just hit save back and continue. And it pushes anything that's changed that I changed here in my model back to ArcGIS Online. So what do I mean and how can I prove it? All we need to do here is just refresh. All right, and when we refresh our, our window here or our screen and I select this manhole, that was the manhole that I changed, that sewer manhole four. And I scroll down, you can see that it has taken that attribute change. All right, so now if anybody had, had connected to this after I made this change, they would see it, okay? That's the great thing about having a live link to the GIS data. Not only can we modify it you know, here in our civil 3D model, but if uh, the GIS analyst comes back and says, well, they've made the fix to that manhole now, I need to change that attribute. If I was to show this in the table, all right, for this data, 
And I look at sewer manhole four, that's the pipe. I need to go to the structures probably. All right, so I'll go back to the table. All right, and I go down to manhole A4. Let me see if I can make that happen here. And I scroll over. I should see that that attribute still says bad. I can simply change it to good or repaired. All right. So now that's been updated. They can go on about their business and continue to edit additional GIS data or bring in more or, or continue to curate data for other people. And I can see inside of my civil 3D model, and I say I, me meaning the civil engineer, at an open, this will update. But if I'm already in the drawing at any point in time, I can simply select. Let me do something here real quick. I can simply select refresh, all right? And if I refresh that data, it goes and queries and pulls all of the new existing information that's there right now. And that's, again, the, the fantastic thing about having a live link to that data. So if I zoom back in and select that structure and go back to my properties and look here, I can scroll down and right here under structure condition, it's been repaired, all right? These are, these are very pertinent things that we need to know as civil engineers. Now, let's take this one, uh, one step further, all right? I've got a proposed design that I've added. I told you we were gonna be adding to this sewer. So I've added my proposed design here, but I've also taken in um, to consideration for all of the existing conditions data. So this is a profile view of the existing sewer line. All I had to do was generate an alignment down the middle to tell it where to cut the profile. All of this information is there from GIS. All of these invert ins, invert outs, the rims, what they are, the stations, the pipe lengths, the type of pipe, all of that has been populated from ArcGIS, okay? Fantastic for the civil engineer. I know exactly what the manhole is doing or how the manhole is set up where I'm tying in. in this particular instance, it's this manhole right here, right? So that's gonna be this structure 14. Right, and I'm just gonna put a stub of pipe or a stub over here with another manhole so I can tie this building into this sewer. Seems like a simple thing, right? Well, if I did not know the, the depth of this manhole, it makes it much, much harder, all right? Uh, sometimes you have to wait on folks to go out and survey it. I'd have to physically go out, pull the lid and look, all right? It just, it's, it's time consuming. If it's right there in the GIS, makes it so much better. Right, so this is my stub of sewer that I, I designed. Um, again, it's got all the proposed information, uh, the new manhole, here's my existing manhole. I'm good to go. Well, now I want to push this out so others that are either on my team can take advantage of it and look at it, review it. Um, bottom line, any stakeholder that needs to see this would be able to see it in ArcGIS Online. And they can do that because I can do this right here. I can publish to ArcGIS, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna publish a new web map that has just that sewer line in it so folks can connect to it and start to use it, right? I'll just grab my ArcGIS network and go through these dialogues. You can actually uh, modify the ArcGIS layer name so that it, it is a little bit more understandable for uh, whoever's gonna be looking at it. We'll give it a new name. We'll just call this Highlands, maybe. Islands sewer proposed. All right, give it a tag. Actually, how about just prop? Give it a tag of Highlands. Man, I can't type for anything. Highlands. Uh, down here at the bottom, we can actually tell it, it uh, that we want it to be editable. All right, so if we're if we're comfortable with that, we can do that. Um, we also can share it with whoever we want. We can share it with groups. Uh, we can share it with everyone, make it public, so on and so forth. I'm just going to keep it in under under house right now. And I'll save this out in uh, my Highlands. I'll just save it out to uh, my content for right now. But I can save it out to Highlands Ranch. So I'll, you know what? I'll do that. A Highlands Ranch GeoBIM. And I'll publish it. All right. What it'll do is it'll grab all the information here in Civil 3D and it'll push it out to ArcGIS Online as a new web, web layer or uh, feature layer, 
all right? Or, um, yeah, feature layer. All right, once that's done, it'll come up and prompt us and ask us if we want to see that new feature layer. All right, so we can do that. We can view that in ArcGIS. And voila, there's our existing line with our proposed stub. And we have all of the same GIS information that we pushed out before on each line. So somebody can connect to this right now and they can start to utilize this, okay? It's great for a what if, uh, what if we're doing a project here also and we need to be able to maybe create a new, uh, create a new or proposed a sewer connection over here, or we have to pull this sewer this way. We could be simultaneously working on this area in design and working on this area in design and utilize this same GIS data and know the proposed locations of where I'm adding sewer here in my design area. So it doesn't have to necessarily be project specific. You're gonna utilize this all over the place. Now, last thing I'll do is all of this project is stored inside of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So, uh, allows you to save everything to the cloud, right? So that's our, uh, that's the Autodesk solution or next gen solution for document management. All right, so again, this is just a view of our files inside of the docs portion of, uh, ABC Pro or the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And you can see that I have these two drawings open. Uh, they're locked, it tells you by who. The thing is, is that uh, what I wanna show you is that you're seeing live, uh, you're seeing the last version that was saved here and you can select that actual DWG file and see everything that's in that drawing, all right? So I can zoom in and look at the information. I am not in a CAD program right now. I'm not in Civil 3D, AutoCAD, InfraWorks, anything. I am just running in a web browser, all right? So anybody can look at this uh, with the right licensing. And what can you see? Can you select anything? I can select that manhole. Let me zoom in to select it. Let me select that manhole, look at the properties. And I can see all of the properties of that manhole, just like we saw with uh, inside of ArcGIS Online. And all projects being inside of the construction cloud definitely is the first step uh, whenever you're talking about uh, creating a, an app for GeoBIM or, or starting to work with GeoBIM. So, Andy, I think I've talked enough, buddy. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you so you can take them through the next steps. Thanks, John. I'm Andrew Creek, and I'm a senior solutions engineer with at Esri for our AEC sector. And our team works with AEC firms to better integrate their GIS and BIM workflows from conceptual design to environmental permitting, field work, construction, and that handoff to the owners and operators. Today, I want to take a few minutes to highlight some of the tools that you can use now to streamline those GIS, BIM, and CAD workflows and help your project teams to work together more efficiently. The first tool is the group. In our, you can do this in ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. So I've created them for our project group. We add all of our content. Matt and John highlighted the way you could add tags. We can search for things, find sharing, um, see how it's shared. Um, but I'm doing this in ArcGIS Online, and I'm tagged this group with external. The reason I'm doing that is because we can use online group sharing to bring in members from other organizations. So many times we work with cross-organization product te or project teams or we're working with an owner operator. And this ability allows us to share content um, across organizations. Another reason for that is we may have different needs. Uh, one project team may only need a subset of the data or if we're working with a, an external group, we may wanna only limit our data to a specific area of interest or filter fields or turn editing off. So this keeps it all Organize, John and anyone from the Autodesk side can see it in their applications. We can see it on the web. Um, and the next big piece is I can see it in ArcGIS Pro. So I can go to my catalog, connect to my portal, my groups tab, find that same group and drag and drop that content into my map. This way we're all working off the same data. Um, 
in our own views and filters on it, but we're still working with that same underlying authoritative data. The second tool is the way we've been working to enhance the way ArcGIS Pro can read CAD and Revit files. And within, with the release of 2.8 in ArcGIS Pro, we now support IFC as well. One of the things we want to, I want to like to highlight is just being able to look at some existing stormwater data here. Typically, when this would have come in from a older DWG file, we would have gotten a limited set of attributes. Typically, we would have gotten maybe a, this box here where we get a pipe, we might get a color, we might get a line type. But it wasn't easy for me as a GIS person to quickly identify what I'm looking at, resymbolize it, um, and set it up. We also get a lot more information. So now we're seeing material types, names, uh, a lot of dimensions from inverts to easting, links. These are the types of things that we need. And there was a lot of rework in this where we would be redrawing this data and hoping to find this type of information sitting in the annotation. It's available now when you identify one of these files, and it's also available when we look at the attribute table. In this way, you can start to think of running geoprocessing on it or being able to load it directly into a system of record. The other part is the symbology. ArcGIS Pro understands that we're looking at a CAD layer. At the top, it's I have a CAD layer highlighted, and it gives me a set of subset of tools that are commonly used with CAD data sets. But it also gives us symbology. So here it knows they brought in the, the Kogo points, symbolize them with a standard set. Um, and we can also see it does this for other networks. So whether it's pressure pipes from you know, drinking water or gas, along with sanitary, storm, roadway corridors, and, and parcels. And all this comes just by simply dragging it and dropping it into our map. But sometimes, you know, we may want to adjust that. We may have a request to make a change. Here on our roadway corridor, we have the measures coming in, and they're set to go every 10, um, which is great for being accurate, but it's making the map a little busy. I can select that layer and go to symbology and adjust this, because this is all handled through um, arcade expressions. Here, I can change this to on the fly, change those measures to every 50 units instead. So the changes can be made, and if you have one that works for your organization or things you want to do, you can save that out as a layer X file and apply it next time uh, you bring in some data or make it across your project as a standard. This some drag and drop capabilities are available when we're looking at 3D. So I can bring that same drainage structure in into a, from Civil 3D into 3D. Um, here we have the same ability to identify the features, get their values. And the symbology is carried over here. The third big tool is our BIM cloud connection. So this is where when John was able to take his desktop Autodesk software and connect to both his cloud and our ArcGIS Online organization, ArcGIS Pro has a similar capability. I can add this by going to my insert and then connections and a BIM cloud connection. Here, it when I set this up, it will ask me for my uh, Autodesk credentials. When when I do that, I get an extra connection here, then cloud connections, where I can see all the projects that I'm a part of. I can drag and drop any of these, this content, these Revit models, Civil 3D, any other files into my project. And when I do that, it downloads a local copy and does some extra processing. But what I really like to highlight is when I was showing those attributes and the symbology, Typically, we would just get that point polygon, polyline. Here, now we're seeing pipes, we're seeing alignments, um, structures. So we're, we're seeing those extra AEC entities. In the same way, if I were to expand one of these Revit models or an IFC model, we understand the BIM uh, disciplines and categories that are in there. The big benefit to using the BIM cloud connection um, and those extra processing that happens is that from that moment on, that document and that, that drawing or Revit model is tracked against that cloud version. So at any time, I can get the status of the model, know that I'm on the latest version, and if I'm not, I can use that same right click to refresh it from source and pull in the most recent. 
I can take my 2D contents, my 3D content, whether it's from Civil 3D, Revit, IFC, or GIS, and combine that into my larger project scene where I've got my, my Revit model, I've got a roadway corridor, John's data that he edited. And part of that editing that we gave him permissions on that, if I pull this up, I turned on editor tracking so that I can see that uh, he, who was the last person to edit and when they did it. Um, so that's available there as well. And then from here, I would go ahead and share this out to ArcGIS Online. That's what really supports the, you know, getting it out to a larger group. From here, we'll go back to ArcGIS Online. And those layers, because they came in with the cloud connection and that URL and the version tracking, those are able to be support our newest release, which is ArcGIS GeoBIM. These tools, ArcGIS GeoBIM is a web-based application that connects ArcGIS Online and the Autodesk Cloud, allowing you to share your project data with everyone on the project team. So project management, customers, stakeholders, um, they're not having to open up desktop software to view this connected environment. We're able to provide that to them in a web app. And this is an example of one of our web apps for ArcGIS GeoBIM. Uh, this is the issue dashboard. The user is presented with those 2D maps and 3D scenes that I created or authored in ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online. And when they select a feature or an asset, they can see the same attributes that we saw when we were using the desktop software. ArcGIS GeoBIM also adds the, the live linking. So here we can see that this feature is part of a larger parent model, the Civic Center architecture. I can launch an in-browser Forge View window that connects me to the latest version within the Autodesk Cloud. And when that draws, you can see that it's linking me to that exact same panel. Um, zooms to it, and I can get the extended properties here, as well as looking at a document browser and seeing different things like elevations, floor plans, or structural plans. And these are all available in the app. I'm not always dealing with, with buildings, I'm actually looking at infrastructure. So we can think of here, we're looking at the MEP plan for a building. Now this could also be a wastewater treatment facility. Anything where we're visualizing 3D infrastructure and you know dense networked pipes or infrastructure in a small space. Because we understand that BIM structure, you can select things by a level. I can go in here and turn off the things I don't wanna see because today I just really wanna look at this air handler that we have on the roof here. I'll select it and launch the model. So we can see a couple extra things that happened this time. The parent model that sits at the bottom for the MEP drawing, but we also have other documents. So we have a product documentation. We may have a spec sheet or instruction manual. We have the same linking here, um, but I can also take that PDF document and because it can be viewed in the Forge View window, I can have those extra documents or photos uh, attached to that content. Getting back to the civil and the roadways, being able to use, bring in detailed infrastructure like this, selecting features within a civil 3D model and having that drawing populate. And I'm gonna go back to the document browser here to highlight another feature. So I brought in the, the standard 2D drawing for this, but that document browser, I can go back in and change it to a 3D view if I want, a better understanding, see what it really looks like and visualize the way that we're able to handle these, this content within ArcGIS Pro. And finally, bringing those that content together so we have our stormwater drainage network uh, that we can visualize both you know, subsurface and, and structures that are on the surface. We bring it together and view it in context. We're able to see different things that we may not have been able to see before. I'll go ahead and turn back on some of the, our building structures. And we can see a parking structure that's brought in from IFC. When we're looking at it in context, we can see that we have a possibility that we're gonna have a conflict between our stormwater structures and the foundation of this building. ArcGIS GeoBrim provides a issue create tool. So here I can create a new issue, uh, say with design, give it an open, give it a title, 
a due date, tie it to a document, give it a root cause. Uh, and then when I do this and hit create, it gets stored back in the Autodesk cloud. So John and his team can see that we flagged an issue that requires someone to take a look at it. Those issues can be tracked, whether you're looking at one project or across a portfolio projects in our dashboard. This is auto-populated from that issue service when you use this template when building one of those GIBA maps. Here, I can go in and visualize where all the issues on my project. I can see where the majorities of them are. We can take a look and see what's coming up, what's outstanding, what's open, who do we need to contact to make sure this project keeps moving. And all those project documents and issues are also available in our attribute table widget. Here, you can you could sort and filter based on type or use a simple keyword to highlight a specific issue. Here, I'm looking for any of the issues that happen to be associated with the hospital building. I can select one of these and it'll highlight and launch that particular issue. I can launch the, the link document. So here, you know, we're looking at a generic mass of the hospital, but we're still linked to the, to the very detailed model within the Autodesk Cloud. I can see what's going on and I can launch it in the Autodesk Cloud if I wanted to. So this is a GeoBit map that builds on top of that 2D, con that 2D maps and 3D content that I made. Take a few minutes to just do a quick tour of how I would create one of these apps. We'll hit the GeoBim home button from here. And this is available in your app picker within ArcGIS Online if you have the licensing. And we would create a new project. I can filter it. We're going to look at the one I already created uh, here. The first page, once you create your project and give it a name, is you can go to your accounts page. And this is where I tell this project whether I want it to focus on one project or portfolio projects. You can imagine if you're managing projects across the region, you might want to have that overview project where you can see the status on everything in one place. Or here, I've selected one particular project within our ACC account to track. After I get that account set up, I can use some of the geoprocessing tools available with ArcGIS GeoVim. The first is our, our locate engineering documents. So when we run this tool, it goes to and searches through the Autodesk Cloud project that I've connected it to, geo references and creates bounding polygons for each one of the drawings, giving them a location. The second one is locate issues, where we go back through all those documents again and take those issues and convert them from uh, drawing or model space and give them a geospatial location. And the third is to create BIM project boundaries. You can think of this as a way of just wrapping one large polygon around all of our documents. We provide a couple of different ways to do that, whether you're looking at one project or a portfolio. But it's simply where are my projects in the map um, and a, a way to create that here through the geoprocessing tools. Our next tab covers the links, the link to features, and link rules. The link rules were created when we brought the content in through the BIM Cloud connection, ArcGIS Pro. That's part of that URL and the tracking. And those are available to view here. We can bring them in. I choose the maps and scenes that I want to use. When the scene draws, I can test those out to make sure and confirm that we're everything's connected. The link to features allows you to go in and manually create links. This is what I did for that air handler when I went in and added the extra PDFs for the service manual inspection reports. All of these can be tagged here. I can add links. And the minute I do that, I'm looking at my Autodesk Cloud account and that project, and I can go in and tag new, dropping, new documents or drawings that I want to attach to a specific feature. And once the account's set up, the tools are run, the links are made, I can then start to create apps. And I only have to do that accounts, tools, and links once. From here, I could create one or 100 apps. Each one of them is created off of templates here. Um, so the one we were looking at earlier was the issues dashboard. So I did that, and it populates the dashboard off the service we created. Those apps can then be configured. So I can come in and give it a theme, give it a name, add a yeah, header image to better 
you know, personalize it for your project, put your company logo, um, and I can turn on and off widgets, choose the maps and scenes I want to use, and make sure to include the 3D widget, which is that building explorer we looked at with the different disciplines, a time slider, because we have many you know, projects, have schedules and times and issues. I uh, want to have that on, and that issue creator widget you can turn off and off as well. This was a brief overview of the tools available in ArcGIS Pro and an introduction to ArcGIS GeoBIM. To discuss the ArcGIS GeoBIM a bit more, I'd like to hand the presentation back to Anthony. Thanks, Andy. So what does this all mean? Well, we're all now enabling our teams the ability to work with the connected data environment. These demonstrations showed how our connectors and ArcGIS GeoBIM bring BIM and GIS content closer together to support stakeholders throughout organizations, letting them easily make educated decisions together. And as Andy showed through that last example, ArcGIS GeoBIM is accomplishing this through a cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration. It's web-based, and it makes connections between the Autodesk Construction Cloud to ArcGIS online at this point in time. And it minimizes data conversion and lets users access data where it resides. So ArcGIS GeoBIM delivers four key benefits. It lets you put your assets and projects on a map so you can understand them in context with GIS and BIM data together. It lets users see their information and even their entire portfolio within a single map. So they can view project data, activities, issues, and documents within a geospatial context. And this helps teams better understand projects and issues, making smarter decisions and communicating more efficiently. And it lets this project data from a common, intuitive web-based experience. Teams can view and retrieve project information from a single access point that makes it easy to locate documents and models across multiple systems. And this speeds up that time to operations or project work and increases productivity and profitability. And it helps you improve collaboration by sharing these easy to use purposeful built apps that let stakeholders explore relevant information and issues. And this promotes better communication, which is key with stakeholders so you can make faster and more informed decisions. And ultimately it reduces this need for data conversions by letting you access data where it resides. And then there is less need to convert that data and models and move them between systems because GeoBIM apps connect to both environments and show the content together. And this saves time, it reduces costs, and it makes it easy just to organize your projects without needing to reorganize the data. So of course, there's a few example and common workflows we've seen in the past with some of our early adopters and our current customers today. But you know, GeoBIM is designed to help support these common asset and project workflows that benefit both from GIS and BIM. It provides vital geospatial context with intuitive apps. It's helping map BIM issues and create geospatial issues for better coordination, for faster resolution. And it's letting you evaluate your project and asset portfolio to see how it is distributed across a region, evaluate risk and performance, and make decisions about future projects and communicate with your peers and stakeholders. So within operations, ArcGIS GeoBIM can be used to link an existing or updated GIS with the original design documents from assets. So at operation teams can better understand and maintain the assets they manage. So quickly, I just wanna reiterate the workflow. Now, if you're interested in ArcGIS GeoBIM, it's actually best to think about how are you organizing your GIS and BIM information today? Are you using ArcGIS Online and Pro to manage your GIS workflows and host your information online? Are you using Autodesk Construction Cloud and your, uh, or BIM 360 to manage your BIM process? These are all key questions that help with the planning effort that takes to drive projects, but also into operations. And information management is a key first step in this process. But once you get past that organization and understanding how you're going to connect your information, you begin to work in ArcGIS GeoBIM where we provide a few tools to connect and integrate your data, configure and share these apps, and then share them out with your users that just need to view the app applications and collaborate around the information. And so I know we've covered a lot of information today. And so what I wanted to do next was provide a few resources for you to learn more about this process. So first starting with the ArcGIS GeoBIM page, but also providing you a set of story map collections that provide multiple views into the GeoBIM process, connecting data across BIM and GIS, and also some examples from one of our customers in h and that was recently published in ArcNews. 
And last but not least, there's another example on the Hitchhiker's Guide to ArcGIS GeoBIM that we presented last year at Autodesk University. This is a great example if you're looking into the details of how do you start to create GeoBIM and really focuses on the issue of georeferencing. Great, thanks so much. Uh, that was an excellent demo and I'm seeing a lot of very excellent questions as well. Um, so one of the first questions I, I'm seeing, Anthony, uh, actually, John, this might be best for you to answer. What's the difference between Autodesk Construction Cloud and BIM 360? Okay, that's something we commonly get because we do reference both of those um, whenever we talk about using GeoBIM. Um, BIM 360 is, uh, I, I don't want to call it the original, but it was the previous version of our cloud solution here at Autodesk. Um, that's where we started. And uh, the Autodesk Construction Cloud is the next generation of that same uh, cloud system. So uh, the, the long and the short of it is you can use GeoBIM with both. So if you have BIM 360 licenses, you can use it. Um, and if you have the Construction Cloud licenses, you can use it. It's just uh, the Construction Cloud is our latest and greatest generation of our cloud service. Excellent. Thanks, John. Okay, so we have another question for Andy. Um, are there any free online tutorials for GIS and BIM, uh, as well as Autodesk applications? So the resources that Anthony put out are great. I'll add one more to that, which is the GIS and BIM learning path. Um, I want to make sure that gets sent out in the in the follow up email that walks you through each of the steps from bringing in BIM content to how to make a map. Um, that shares that 3D scene um, capabilities, and many of them have some sample data sets to go along with them as well. The other, the Shikers guideline is also very valuable because most times, sometimes, unfortunately, the, the rabbit models aren't correctly located, and there's some really great tools in there for getting them located the proper way um, to be able to make these workflows a lot more seamless. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so we have another question for Anthony. Um, will there be any support for IFC models? That's a great question. So uh, Andy mentioned it actually earlier in the presentation was that in ArcGIS Pro, you can bring IFC into Pro and start to create your GIS from that information. Well, in GeoBIM, we are reading DWG and Revit files directly and creating polygons from that, that links back to that source. And you can also link your GIS within GeoBIM to IFC files stored within BIM 360, but we do not automatically generate polygons for IFC yet. However, that is something that we are looking for to include this year in our roadmap. We're working on testing that out and being able to do replicate the same workflows we've done for DDG and RVT, but net next for IFC. So it's in the works, no time frame yet at this point to announce, but we definitely are interested in making sure we are continuing to progress this, these capabilities to your needs. Great. Excellent question. All right, so back over to you, Anthony, another question. Uh, any plans in making ArcGIS GeoBIM 100% web-based workflow? Okay, now that's a great question that we kind of get often. I think as, as you are, have seen through the demonstration that Andy provided, um, there's a lot of users already that are creating these highly detailed um, representations within GIS called building scene layers, right? And I've heard this need, and we we've, we've, we've hear it, that you want this ability to basically go from web service directly to another web service without having to go through a desktop workflow. I completely understand the pain there. And so I think what you're seeing with our first release of GeoBIM is addressing a step-by-step -step approach to possibly getting to something like that within the future. It's just taking the first step of really retraining our ideas of how are we planning these projects? Because one thing we've realized is the biggest issue right now has been talking about georeferencing. And that's a key first step to make sure people understand in the preparation of their data that will enable these steps to do more in the future. So to quickly summarize that answer, it's not available yet, but yes, we are thinking about it. It just will take time to get to that type of a capability that goes directly from web to web. Great. All right, one uh, question for you, John. Um, can you work with pressure pipes? Um, I'm assuming work with pressure pipes, you mean, can you publish the pressure pipes from Civil 3D? I, I think that might be the question. So I, I can answer it either way. Um, you, the, 
you cannot publish pressure pipes at this time, but um, if you open up the, the model inside of ArcGIS Pro, the pressure pipes do come through. So you can use them that way. Excellent. That is, that oh. is on the roadmap, by the way. <laughs> Okay, another question for you, Anthony. Does this work for uh, Portal for ArcGIS as well? Is it only for ArcGIS Online um, and the ArcGIS connector? You know, this is a great question, but since we covered a lot of integrations today, I'm gonna start with the connectors. So John can co confirm for me, but if you're working in the connectors within Autodesk, you can connect to both ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise data sets. You do need your uh, username to authenticate to those systems. But so yeah, that, that's definitely possible. Um, now in ArcGIS GeoBIM, which is the next version of these, these integrations, right, is yes, we are only in ArcGIS Online at this point in time. Uh, however, we are working towards an enterprise release. We're hoping to have something by the end of this year but it's still tentative at this point. But yes, we are working towards another offering that if you're working in enterprise, you can start to connect these same workflows through enterprise as well within ArcGIS and enterprise. Um, the one thing I will add on this though is there's a lot of excitement over new capabilities, new ideas, uh, or even just questions. There's actually another great resource within Esri communities, and it's actually at community.esri.com. If you search for GeoBIM, it will take you to our Azure community page for ArcGIS GeoBIM. And so that has a great place where if you have new ideas of things that we should be focusing on for the future, throw them on the ideas page. Or if you have questions that you're running into some challenges, you didn't understand maybe how to do a step or need some help with resources, there's a questions page for you. Um, we have people standing by to review those pages as questions come in. And it's a great way to engage and to help inform us how your workflows are, are handling within GeoBIM. Excellent. Um, I'm a bit conscious of our time, so we'll answer just a couple more questions. Uh, John, this question is for you. Um, let me just scroll up to the question. Uh, you demonstrated changing attributes in Autodesk and pushing those edits back into ArcGIS Online, but can you make those changes to location as well? Oh, that's a great question. I should have showed that in the demonstration. Absolutely. If, uh, if, if you find in the field, this happens commonly. I mean, I, I go back to the engineer, the civil engineer going out and doing a site visit. Um, it, it just, it puts everything into perspective as to where everything's at. So if you've got in, information, uh, GIS information that you brought into your drawing already, and for some unforeseen reason, maybe that manhole, uh, or, or you see a manhole that's there that didn't show up in the survey or wasn't in GIS, Commonly, that would mean that it was probably covered up, all right? And something may have happened to where they uncovered that manhole. Uh, you could add that manhole back in and, and uh, publish that back out. You can also grab any of those manholes and, that we had on there, and you could move them to their correct location. So say a surveyor went out and field located uh, the, the actual manhole lids themselves, right? It doesn't get any better grade of GIS than that right there. And if those positions are different than what you bring in, you simply move them to the correct location, save back, and then everybody benefits from that. So to answer your question shortly, yes. Excellent. Um, we have another question for you, John, uh, coming from an emerging GeoBIM professional. Where are the entry level jobs uh, going to be for students who learn ArcGIS and Autodesk Rapid and or Civil 3D? Well, I got to applaud you, number one. Um, <laughs> The one of the questions, crazily enough, that we get from our customers is where can we find people <laughs> to to fill the seats to do the work that we need done? So I start uh, start at your local engineering architectural firms. I guarantee you uh, municipalities, especially if you're getting in the GIS field, it's a great place to start. If I, I, I promise you that the jobs are there. Uh, people are very, very, very happy to see faces come in the door that are, are excited about uh, working with buildings, working with infrastructure, and definitely working with GIS. So um, I, don't, I don't think you'll have a problem. Just uh, uh, you can do a quick Google search of the folks in your area, and I promise you uh, somebody's going to definitely pick you up. Great questions. All right. So I think that's all the time we have for questions uh, for today. I'll hand it over back to uh, Barbary to wrap things up. 
Absolutely. What a great presentation, gentlemen. Thank you so much. We hope you have a great day. Tell a friend about Esri Autodesk and Directions Magazine. Thanks, everybody.